Welcome to Partner Technical Services Product Release Training. The Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 Financial Management New Features Bank Management course will be presented by Senior Support Engineer Ryan Clevin. This course only covers new features, so knowledge of previous versions of Microsoft Dynamics AX is a prerequisite. This course was developed based on beta versions of Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012, so there may be some slight differences in the release product. Now let me introduce Ryan Clevin. Welcome to Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 Financials Management New Features, where today we'll cover Module 6, uh, Bank Management. My name is Ryan Clevin. I'm a Senior Support Engineer uh, specializing in Microsoft Dynamics AX Financials Management Application Support. I've been working for Microsoft for the past five years, all involved in the support of financial management applications. In Module 6 today, we'll talk about Bank Management. In this module, will be describing the key changes to bank management functionality in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. So lesson one, let's just kind of talk about an overview of the bank management changes in uh, Dynamics AX 2012. And so we'll kind of give an overview of what the key changes are and then as we get later into the module of bank management in the later lessons we'll talk about the individual features so they make more sense. So just to kind of provide an overview of the bank management changes in Dynamics AX 2012, um, there's been some important functionality uh, added into the cash and bank management module to assist with the management of your bank account. Uh, we now have validation control on important bank account specific fields. This helps to ensure that the correct federal tax and bank information is entered in Dynamics AX, which leads to appropriate communication with tax authorities. So we'll kind of look later on as, as far as what the validation is. In Dynamics AX 2009, for example, you could enter any bank account number any routing number and the system would save it. Now with AX2012 we have controls now so you can't just enter any series of characters into those fields they now have to uh, be validated uh, in order to be saved with the bank account information. We'll talk about both those validation controls from a US bank account standpoint and from a Canadian bank account standpoint. Also in Dynamics AX2012, we have a new electronic bank statements framework that is aimed to provide a data model for the representation of electronic bank statements in Dynamics AX2012. This framework provides an avenue for bank statements to be imported into AX2012 using the AIF framework. Uh, to get an idea of how this will work, there's now going to be a setup bank statement import option at the bank account level in the bank management module. And once you have that mapped to your bank account in a general journal, you can use the functions import statement option and actually select that import method that you map to your bank account to bring that into a general journal. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a later lesson. Also in Dynamics AX 2012, uh, when the generate payment process runs and the default value date has been set up for an Italian export format, this default value date is now actually displayed on the bank remittance report and the resulting file export. In addition to that, we also have the ability to inactivate the actual bank account in the bank management subledger, which you didn't have the ability to do in Dynamics AX 2009. We'll get a little bit more into that in a later lesson. In Dynamics AX 2012, we also have some functionality added to be able to accommodate to the IAT code set to accommodate the code changes mandated by NACHA for NACHA operating rules in a file format scenario. So let's get right into the validation of bank account fields in Dynamics AX 2012 in Lesson 2. Lesson 2 will look at this from a U.S. bank account standpoint. So in this lesson, we'll, we'll break it down into some different components, uh, defining the format and digit validation for existing bank account um, number and transit routing number fields based on the routing type. We'll talk about the idea of a credit limit validation, which you can uh, turn on. And we'll also talk about the modification of bank account number fields at the customer and the vendor master level, uh, which adds validation that did not exist uh, in Dynamics AX 2009. So let's go into Dynamics AX 2012. I'm going to go to the new menu items for bank management. It's actually called cash in bank management, so it's no longer bank, as you noticed in AX 2009, but it's referred to as cash in bank management now. So I'll go to cash in bank management, I'll go to common, and then bank accounts, where I'll take a look at my bank accounts here. For our purposes today, I'll select the USA operating bank account, which will open the bank accounts form. 
So there's some key fields uh, that you would assign to a bank account, not only in AX 2012, but also in AX 2009. And these key fields are the bank account number and the routing number. In Dynamics AX 2009, you could enter any value in the bank account number or any value in the routing number field of the bank's form, and it would actually accept that change. And you'd see that in your corresponding file formats or any place elsewhere in AX where that routing number and account number would be visible. The idea with Dynamics AX 2012 is we now have validation that occurs based on the routing number and the bank account number selected. And the validation is performed on the bank account number field and the bank routing number field. And the key drivers with how the validation is performed is the country that is assigned to the address that is mapped to the bank account. So in this case, the USA operating bank account does not have an address defined. So I'm going to just add an address. And in the country region field, I'm just going to select the USA. And I'll just enter a, a zip code. So I now have uh, the USA address mapped to the uh, USA operating bank account. You can see that because the US, it recognizes this as a USA address and, and would relate to a USA bank account, then now we have validation around the uh, bank account number field. So what this is telling me here is the bank account number must be between 7 and 14 digits. The validation is performed based on the country mapped to the bank account address combined with the routing number type. So in this case, the routing number types would be uh, none AT, BL, CC, CP, CH, FW, and SC. So for example, if I selected CH, I try to enter a value of A in the routing number field. It tells me that a routing number can only uh, contain digits from 0 to 9. So it's going to actually put some validation. So it's not going to allow me to enter any random value in the routing number field. Similarly to the bank account number field, when I try to enter a random value of test, it tells me the bank account number must be numeric only. So the validation performed for U.S. bank accounts in Dynamics AX 2012 is driven off of the country assigned to the address mapped to the bank account combined with the routing number type. And you can see that the info log when you tab off the field actually gives you some additional information related to uh, where the validation is failing. So in this case, I'm just going to remove the address here so that I can close the bank account. So that's uh, how the validation functions in a U.S. bank account in Dynamics AX 2012. Some important validation added so to ensure that the account number and the routing number is appropriate to the bank account based on the address and the routing number type selected. In Dynamics AX 2012, we actually now have credit limit validation uh, in place, which allows a bank credit limit check can be performed when an AP payment journal is created and bank is specified as the offset account type. So in this scenario, the system will check the available balance with the credit limit established for the bank account in conjunction with the bank credit limit tolerance that you'll establish in the parameters for the cash and bank management module. Some key components that we're going to take a look at related to this credit limit validation feature is defining the bank credit limit tolerance in bank parameters, defining the credit limit for the uh, bank account, and then journal post-validation when the bank account is used as the offset account in an AP payment journal. So the first thing is actually the bank credit limit tolerance. There's actually a new field added into the cash and bank parameters form. So I'm going to go back to cash and bank management, setup, cash and bank management parameters. And you'll actually see a new bank credit limit tolerance fields uh, available in the parameters form here. So you'll have the option to select either none, uh, warning, or error. So you're putting some control around how you want that credit limit to take place. So the second component of that is actually to define the credit limit for a given bank account. So I'll go back to common bank accounts, and we'll go back to our USA operating bank account again. And you'll actually see a credit limit field here on the general FAST tab of the bank accounts form. So you can enter the credit limit 
directly against the bank account. So that'll work in conjunction with the parameter setting that you defined. Now the third piece of it is actually just in relation to an accounts payable payment journal. So when you actually do an accounts payable payment journal in AX and that bank account is specified as the offset account, in that scenario the system will check the available balance with the credit limit for the selected bank and allow you to proceed based on what is defined in the bank credit limit tolerance field of the parameters form that we saw. So if the field is set to warning, you'll be allowed to post, we'll be presented with a warning message. If the, the tolerance field in the parameters is set to error, then you will not be allowed to post, you'll be presented with the same error message. So in Dynamics AX 2012, we now allow you to uh, define a credit limit check at the bank account level. We talked a little bit about how the bank account number and the bank routing numbers are validated at the bank account level in Dynamics AX 2012. Now those fields can also be validated at the bank accounts that you'd map to a customer or a vendor account in, in Dynamics AX 2012. So that validation that we perform on bank accounts in the bank module, so our company's bank accounts, the same validation is going to be in place for the customers and vendors bank accounts that you would set up in accounts receivable and accounts payable respectively. So just as an example, if we go to accounts payable, go to common vendors, all vendors, and for example, if I take a look at the adventure services vendor, and in the uh, vendors tab of the vendors form, there's going to be a set up bank accounts. This is where you'd see your vendors bank accounts information here. And actually, there's going to be validation performed on the routing number and bank account number fields on the vendor bank account based on the address selected and the routing number type here, similarly to what we saw in the bank module itself. And the same would be the case for uh, customers. So we're not only validating our company's bank accounts, bank account number and routing number, but we're also validating the, our customers and our vendors' uh, bank accounts and bank account numbers and, and transit routing number fields. So let's move on to lesson three, where we'll talk about the validation of Canadian bank account fields in Dynamics AX 2012. So this uh, lesson is you know, quite similar to lesson two, where we saw that when you selected the USA country region that was mapped to your bank account address, then that worked in conjunction with the routing number type to determine how the bank account number and routing number fields were validated. So the same is going to be the case for Canadian bank account fields in Dynamics AX 2012. So we now have validation control around uh, those bank accounts that you have set up for Canada. So let's go into Dynamics AX and we'll go back to cash and bank management and let's go to set up bank groups. So the first thing here is in Dynamics AX 2012 validation has been added to the routing number field of the bank group for a Canadian bank account. So again this is driven off of the uh, country region assigned to the address of the bank group. So we now have validation in this routing number field based on the routing number type and the country region mapped to the address of the bank group. So that's the first location for a Canadian bank account where we have validation added. The second location uh, has been uh, similarly to what we saw at the bank account level. So if I go to common bank accounts and let's uh, pull up the USA payroll operating account here. And I currently do not have an, an address map so I'm just going to actually create an address and this time I'll select Canada as the country region. And I'll just select the first zip code. So the validation for the Canadian bank accounts is going to work similarly to what we had set up for the U.S. bank accounts. So the routing number type would typically be CC. So if I come in here and try to enter uh, you know, a value that fails the validation, it's going to give me a message that says number of digits in routing number for routing number type CC must be 9. Similarly, gives me the same message on the bank account number field. 
So it's driven similarly to what we saw with the U.S. bank account validation off of the country assigned to the bank account address combined with the routing number type selected, which for Canada um, would typically be CC. So the system won't actually allow you to save the bank routing number or the bank account number for a Canadian bank account if it fails the validation based on those two fields. And similarly to what we saw, in this case I'm going to actually just remove the address so that we can close the form and then I'll go back to just the accounts payable. Now similar to what we saw with the US validation, we actually now have validation performed in the bank account fields at the vendor bank account level and the customer bank account level. So we'll just go back and take a quick look at that. So if I go to the vendors form and look at my adventure services vendor, go to set up bank accounts. Again, if I were to actually select Canada as the country region assigned to this vendor's bank account address, then the routing number and the bank account number fields are going to be validated similarly to what we saw with our company's bank accounts in the bank accounts form. So similarly to what we saw with the U.S. bank account validation, we have that same logic, same validation control added into the Canadian bank account validation. Moving on to lesson four, where we'll talk about the bank statement import form framework in Dynamics AX 2012. This lesson introduces us to the new framework for bank statement imports in Dynamics AX 2012. So in AX 2009, there wasn't a generic framework for the import of electronic bank statements for reporting and, and reconciliation. As a result, electronic statements like CODA for Belgium and the Sislayer and MT940 for Germany and Netherlands were handled on a case-by-case -case basis and had their own isolated data models and processing logic for both importing and bridging. So in AX2012, we have a new framework that's introduced that overcomes this limitation. So we have this electronic bank statements feature that is provided to provide a data model for the representation of electronic bank statements in AX2012 and a framework for them to be allowed to be imported using the AIF document services. So the BAI, BAI2 format, if we remember from an AX2009 standpoint, serves as a model to demonstrate how that framework could be used to import and capture the logistical structure of any bank statement format. So in Dynamics AX2012, similarly to how that BAI, BAI2 format function, we actually allow you to create your own uh, import that maps to the bank account, and then in the general ledger journal form, you can actually uh, select that method of import that you map to your bank account and have that actually bring into a general journal. On pages 17, 18 and 19 of the bank management new features training document provides some uh, details around the uh, bank statement import framework from an infrastructure standpoint as far as visually what's happening behind the scenes uh, and technically the technical details of, of how this bank uh, electronic bank statement import framework functions. Well, let's go into Dynamics AX 2012 and just get a visual of what that'll look like. So if I go to cash and bank management I'm actually just going to go back to a bank account here. I'll select my USA operating bank account again. And on the setup tab, there's actually going to be a bank statement button. When I open the bank statement button, it actually opens a methods of importing account statements form for the USA operating bank account here. So here I can say, I'm going to create a new method of import called USA operating. I'll select a bridging account. I should select an inbound port here in an import format. So the import formats that you have available to select are BAI2, DTA US, Finish Basic, Format 1, MT940, or NL Swift 940. So I'll just select this for in our case. So in this case, I've created a new method of importing bank account statements called USA Operating, and I've mapped that to my USA Operating bank account. So how that works is if I go into General Ledger and open the General Journal form, I'll just create a new General Journal, click the Lines button. So when I go to Functions, Import Account Statement Transactions, I'm going to actually see that method of import available to select. So with Dynamics AX 2012, you now have the ability to 
map a bank statement import format to your bank account and via the general journal form you can actually use the functions import account transaction option to select that method of import that you would map to your bank account. So allowing that new bank statement import for framework in Dynamics AX 2012, an important feature then that allows you to some additional flexibility from a bank management standpoint. Moving on to lesson five, where we'll talk about the use of the default value date on the bank remittance report and payment file in Dynamics AX 2012. This feature relates to the Italian fiscal requirement. So that when the default value date is set up, this date should be used in the recipient value date in the payment file and corresponding bank remittance report. So when you run the generate payment process from an accounts payable journal, and the default value date has been set up based on the export format that you selected, the system will actually use that default value date now in Dynamics AX 2012 and populate it into the automatic payment filed in record 10, position 23 through 28, also on the bank remittance report in that recipient value date field. So we'll talk a little bit about how this uh, uh, functions. Now essentially it assumes that you have a bank account set up for Italian validation. So you have you would have a in the bank management module you'd have a, a bank account set up for Italian validation. And it also assumes that you'd have a, a, a vendor set up for Italian validation. So a vendor set up with a bank account uh, assigned to an Italian address. But the key component here is the method of payment selected. So if we go into Dynamics AX 2012 and I go to Accounts Payable, Setup, Payment, Methods of Payment, I'll just create a new method of payment here. And in the File Formats tab, I need to select the file format of Pegamento for Notori. So in order to select that option, I need to click the Setup button in order to actually map that as an option. So I'm going to just select that as, a, as an available file format. Close the form. And now back in the Methods of Payment Vendors form, I'm going to assign that export format to the Italy method of payment that I created. So now the idea is you would actually do an accounts payable payment journal like you always would and you would use that method of payment on the journal line. So if I go to accounts payable journals payment payment journal, I'm just going to select the 100 vendor, 1001 vendor account, and I see that I have a, a invoice out here. So I'm just going to select this invoice just to push a line into the payment journal. I can see that my USA operating bank account defaults in. I'm going to actually select my uh, method of payment that I had created now called uh, Italy, and go to Functions Generate Payments. open the generate payments form, I'm going to select that export format that I had created and map to my method of payment. And you'll notice now that you get this uh, new form that pops up that will allow you to specify a location for the export file and to enter a creation date and a default date. So if both a creation date and a default value date are entered in this form, the recipient value date will use the default value date. For example, if you entered 4-28-2011 as the creation date and 4-29-2011 as the default value date, the recipient value date field on the bank remittance report will be 4-29-2011. If a creation date is entered in this form, for example, but I do not enter a default value date, the recipient value date field will be blank on the bank remittance report and that location of the actual file format, that could, the export file that gets created. 
So you can kind of see that now we're using the default date for the bank remittance report and the file export that actually gets created when this export format is assigned to that method of payment for your accounts payable payment journal. So moving on to lesson six. In lesson six, we're going to talk about the inactivation of bank accounts feature in Dynamics AX 2012. So in Dynamics AX 2009, we did not have a method for closing or inactivating a bank account. So in AX 2009, you would have essentially, uh, in order to attempt to accomplish this, you would have had to take a look at the cash account that was assigned to the bank account. And in the general ledger module, you would have the ability to enter an active from and an active to date to specify the period of time for which that general ledger cash account could be available for use. However, in AX 2009, that was your only functionality there was to be able to you know, create a scenario where you're inactivating the cash account assigned to the bank account. You couldn't actually inactivate the bank account from the bank management subledger itself. In AX 2012, we now allow you to inactivate the company bank account itself directly in the cash and bank management subledger. This applies to the immediate inactivation of a bank company account as well as the ability to enter active from and to dates to specify the period of time for which the bank company account could be available for use. So with this functionality and being able to inactivate a company bank account, you have the, some benefits such as you can set the company bank account to a status where the bank account cannot be used for new transactions, but users could still perform certain activities with the company bank account, including reversals and settlements against existing promissory notes and bills of exchange. Another uh, important benefit is you could set the company bank account to a status where the company bank account cannot be used for any activity in the bank management subledger whatsoever. So we'll talk about uh, uh, you know, how you would accomplish both of those. So let's go back into Dynamics AX, and we'll just take a look first at how you do actually inactivate a, a company bank account. So let's go to Cash and Bank Management, Common, Bank Accounts, and I'll just go back to the USA Operating Bank Account. You'll notice now that there's a Bank Account Status field in Dynamics AX 2012. The default option will be active for all transactions, but you could also select inactive for new transactions or inactive for all transactions. So if you select inactive for new transactions, you will not be able to enter new transactions against this bank account. However, you could um, perform certain transactions such as reversals and settlements against existing promissory notes and, and bills of exchange. Conversely, if you select inactive for all transactions, then you essentially can't do anything related to that bank account. So you can't enter new transactions, you can't perform reversals, you can't perform settlements against existing promissory notes. So the difference between inactive for new transactions and inactive for all transactions is whether or not you want the ability to allow settlements and reversals um, for the bank account or if you just want to completely prevent those altogether. Also, you notice that when you select the active for all transactions option that you can actually enter in an active from and an active to date range. So conversely, if you select it inactive for new transactions or inactive for all transactions, the active from and the active to dates are unavailable. So if I select active for all transactions and I wanted to actually inactivate a company bank account through the use of a date range, then I can easily do so by entering the range So in this case, I'm saying this company bank account is active from for the month of April of 2011. So if you attempted to enter a new transaction against this company bank account using a date outside of that range, you'd get a warning message indicating that the company bank account is inactive for new transactions. So some important functionality there, being able to actually inactive, put some control and logic around the ability to inactivate a bank account itself. And it doesn't require that you have to go all the way into the general ledger and do that to the cash account assigned to the bank account. So an important feature in Dynamics AX 2012. Now we'll move on to Lesson 7. In Lesson 7, we're going to talk about the changes to accommodate IAT rules for both U.S. and Canadian bank formats in Dynamics AX 2012. This lesson introduces the IAT rule changes that have been implemented in the file formatting capabilities of the cash and bank management module in AX 2012. 
So an amendment to the NACHA operating rules became effective that will provide identification of transactions originating from internal sources. This was introduced by NACHA as a new code set called IAT. The idea here is that banks or depository institutions now need to know the parties in the transaction in order to comply with NACHA requirements. So we're going to discuss this new IAT code set as it relates to the new NACHA requirements in the following components in Dynamics AX 2012 from a U.S. ACH electronic payment format standpoint and from a Canadian RBC electronic payment format. So again, the basis of the NACHA requirements is that banks need to know the parties in the transaction in order to comply. So in order to handle this situation, a new standard entry class code was added for the handling of such transactions, which is referred to as IAT. The critical aspect of an IAT transaction is the geographical location of the financial agency involved as opposed to the originator or the receiver. So the scenario where it, uh, the IAT code set becomes irrelevant based on the new NACHA operating rules is let's say you have a U.S. company bank account and you're paying a vendor that has a Canadian bank account. Well, this would be uh, an IAT situation. Or conversely, if you're a Canadian bank account and you're paying a vendor that has a U.S. bank account, then that would also be an IAT situation. So when we discuss the IAT rules as it relates to Dynamics AX 2012, we're, we're looking at it from a perspective of where the vendor is located in a different country than the company bank account for which we're initiating the payment from. On page 29 of the Bank Management Financials Management New Features Training Doc, give a little bit of a background as far as the elements involved to determine if an ACH transaction should be formatted as IAT. The key driver in this is really the method of payment. Now this IAT code set is relevant from both an accounts payable and an accounts receivable standpoint. For our purposes in this discussion in this lesson we're going to look at it from an accounts payable standpoint. So let's go into Dynamics AX 2012 and the key here is the method of payment. So the first component involved with implementing the IAT code set in AX 2012 really is the method of payment. There's an export format called NACHA IAT, which you need to map to your method of payment that gets used in an accounts payable payment journal. When you then use that method of payment in an accounts payable payment journal, then there's going to be an additional button available in the journal voucher form of the payment journal that allows you to specify the additional IAT fields and when you actually use the functions generate payment, AX is going to actually format that file that gets exported and sent to the bank with the new IAT file format. So let's go look at our methods of payment. I have a method of payment out here called IAT, and you can see in the export format field, I have the NACHA IAT US export format selected. So the key here is to use this method of payment IAT in an AP payment journal in a scenario where the vendor has a bank account in Canada where our company bank account is based out of the US. So I have a payment journal out here, payment journal 424 underscore 010, where you can see I have a vendor out here that's been uh, associated with the 2103 vendor account, which is actually a Canadian vendor. And you can see I have the USA operating bank account selected in the payment journal line and I have a payment out here for $11. You can see I have this IAT method of payment selected. To the right of the method of payment field is where you enter the NACHA IAT information button. So this button is only going to be available in that scenario where the country associated with the vendor is different than the country associated with the bank account for where we're initiating the payment. So if I click the, the NACHA IAT button, you can see that you'll have to enter the foreign exchange reference and remaining NACHA IAT information specific fields that will actually get created and assigned in the file format once you actually generate the payment. In this case, I'll just enter some data into these fields and close. And from this point, you're, you do exactly what you would have been uh, done before. You do the functions generate payment, select your payment method, Select NACHA IAT US. Specify a location for the file name. And click OK. And when this actually generates the file, instead of using the old NACHA file format, it's going to use the NACHA IAT specific format because of that export format that we have assigned to the method of payment. So the idea with the NACHA IAT format is that you're mapping that export format to a method of payment you're using that method of payment 
in an accounts payment journal. When you actually do that payment journal, you do the functions generate payment similarly to what you would always do in a payment journal process. The export file gets created. The system knows that it needs to create the export file in a NACHA IAT specific format to send to the bank. The same scenario also applies uh, for a converse situation where let's say you have a Canadian bank account and you're paying a vendor based out of the U.S. that has a U.S. bank account. So to accommodate IAT changes for the Royal Bank of Canada, we've added fields to the uh, RBC STD export format in AX 2012 to contain new records that will be mandatory for all clients or customers who process payments destined to the U.S. from a Canadian bank account. These will automatically be defined as an IAT ACH transaction by the RBC system. So when looking at this from a Canadian RBC electronic payment format, the introduction of IAT formatting capabilities is really accomplished through two key components, assigning the RBC as the export format to your method of payment, and then processing a payment journal that involves that methods of payment. So again, like we just talked about with the U.S. NACHA situation, again, it's driven off the methods of payment. So if I were to create a new method of payment called RBC, I'll click the Setup button, and I'll assign the RBC file format. That'll allow me to actually select that file format. So I've simply created a method of payment called RBC that has the export format of RBC uh, selected or assigned against the method of payment. Again, this would also be relevant from a perspective of accounts receivable as well as accounts payable. For our discussions today, we're kind of focusing on this from an accounts payable standpoint. So all that is done now is when you go back and you actually process a payment journal, access the journal voucher form, the idea is when you enter the payment journal, you're selecting a vendor in the U.S. in the U.S. that has a U.S. bank account, where you're selecting your Canadian bank account, and the method of payment is used is the one that you created that has the RBC export format assigned. In doing that, the IAT button will be available where you enter those IAT specific fields, and when you process the functions generate payment, the resulting file is going to be in the format of the new IAT changes. On page 36 of the Financials Management Bank Management New Features Training Doc, we have visual, uh, a table that talks about actually how the format is going to look like for IAT. You can see how the IAT address record appears in the resulting file on page 36, as well as on page 37. So to recap, the, uh, the IAT code set has been added um, to allow for enhanced export format capabilities in AX 2012 allowing you to accommodate to the NACHA operating rules that became effective based on the requirement of depository institutions needing to know the originating and receiving information. Moving on to lesson number eight. In lesson number eight, we're just going to recap the new features and provide a review of the bank management changes in Dynamics AX 2012. So as we've discussed in the previous uh, seven lessons, there have been significant changes to the bank management module in AX 2012 that will really assist with the management of your company bank accounts and help you keep in compliance with NACHA rules. The key changes again with the cash and bank management module include the new validation that we've added for US bank accounts including the account number and the transit routing number which is driven off of the country assigned to the address associated with the bank account. This validation is not only relevant to the company bank account but it's also relevant to the setup of vendor bank accounts and customer bank accounts in accounts payable and accounts receivable when the U.S. country is selected on that vendor or customer address. Similarly to the validation of bank account fields that we've added for U.S. bank accounts, we also have similar validation for Canadian bank accounts now on the bank account number and the transit routing number fields and the company bank accounts similarly to the vendor bank accounts and the customer bank accounts, similarly to what we saw with the U.S. validation. In AX 2012, the default value date that you enter in the generate payments form in the scenario where you're using the Italian uh, Pagamento Fornitori export format is now actually used in the generation of the payment file in the bank remittance report to keep you in compliance. Also, in AX 2012, you have the ability to inactivate a company bank account. 
in AX 2009, you did not have this ability. You're the only functionality that we had in AX 2009 was to actually inactivate the cash account that was assigned to the bank account. In AX 2012, you now have the ability to inactivate the bank account directly in the bank subledger and put some logic around there whether you want to apply an active from or to date as well. And also, the amendment to the NACHA operating rules that provides identifications of transactions originating from internal sources through the introduction of the IAT code set has been handled and added in AX 2012 to allow you to accommodate to mandated changes by NACHA in a scenario where you're initiating a payment from a, perhaps a U.S. bank account to a vendor that is based in Canada or else a, a Canada bank account to a vendor that's based out of the U.S. Partner Technical Services is a benefit provided to members in the Microsoft Partner Network to ensure success throughout the business cycle. Partner Technical Services includes services, offerings with packaged and custom solutions that can help increase revenue, accelerate the sales cycle, win more deals, beat competitors, expand a skill set, provide more reliable deployments, and increase customer satisfaction. Partner Technical Services technical consultants have the latest product, technical sales, and delivery expertise, and are committed to partner enablement via knowledge transfer. Through delivery of effective guidance, our consultants share best practices, empowering partners to continually deliver high-quality engagements to customers. When you enroll, re-enroll, or qualify for an upgrade, you will receive partner advisory hours allocated to your organization based on membership competency level. Until you enroll or re-enroll under the new structure, your existing benefit structure will continue. Partner advisory hours provide a single currency to use in obtaining partner technical services packaged and custom solutions. Your current allocation of advisory hours can be used to take advantage of the new offerings under partner technical services. You will only see a change to your advisory hour benefits when you enroll or re-enroll after October 2010. Optimize your business by gaining knowledge and increasing your capacity to successfully provide services to customers. Our offerings help your organization broaden your readiness and enhance your methodologies to further your reach in the marketplace. Accelerate the sales cycle, increase wins against the competition, and expand your business with partner technical services. With service offerings from PTS, you'll be able to proficiently convey the functionalities, value propositions, and key benefits of Microsoft products and solutions. Our best practices and guidance will help grow your market share. Ensure IT services are deployed effectively and successfully with a more reliable result. Sharing our best practices, PTS empowers you to perform operative deployments with minimal risk. If you have additional questions and wish to utilize your partner advisory hours for assistance, contact askpts at microsoft.com or call 1-800-MPN-SOLVE.